Uh, let's look at the uh, modes a little bit further. So there are three modes of material nature. Sattva Marajasthamaiti Gunaha Prakriti Sambhavan. Nibadnanti Mahabaho Dehe Dehina Maugayam. Krishna says that all living beings are bound by the three modes. This is 14.5. And in 14.13, 14, 11, 12, 13, he talks about how the three modes function. How do they affect us in our functioning? So he uses the word prakasha and pravutti. Prakasha is illumination. It's capability to see things clearly. And pravutti is, is action. So in the mode of ignorance, Krishna says, aprakasho apravrittischa pramado moha evacha tamasyetani jayante vivruddhe kurunandana he says, aprakasha, there is neither illumination nor apravrittisha, neither action. Pramada moha eva cha, there is intoxication, there is delusion. Tamasya etani jayante. So in the mode of ignorance, we just become, some people just get paralyzed. Sometimes some people live like almost in a trana state of days. It said that some people make things happen. Some people watch things happen and some people wonder what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, those in the mode of ignorance, they wonder what happened. What's going on? What happened? What happened? So, they're just in a daze. There is neither action nor contemplation. And uh, <clears throat> so people, nowadays, people may just spend a lot of time so, uh, watching video games, playing video games, watching movies. And sometimes the digitally created world can for many people become an alternative to the real world. In, in America, an increasing social problem is that many young people, they, they grow into adolescence, they go into, they go into youth, and still, they don't feel any need to take any responsibility. Just live on in their parents' houses and their social security, the government will pay for you. They just stay in their homes, play video games, watch movies, surf on the net. And they're basically living life secondhand. Just watching someone do it and think that I am doing it and enjoying it. Say people, when we watch movies, yeah. It's basically, the Bhagavatam talks about how they are eating, sleeping, mating, defending. They are the basic bodily drives. And all human beings, all living beings crave for it and human beings also crave for it. But when we are caught in watching movies, it is, say in movies there is a romantic scene, the hero and heroine are embracing and people start whistling over there. So now what are they doing? It is not even mating, it is second-hand mating. <laughs> Somebody else is doing it, and I think, oh, if I was there, it would be so enjoyable. That's why most of the time, when people want people watch movies, they take something like popcorn, and they keep popping it in. Why? Because everything is imaginary, something has to be real. <laughs> So, <laughs> entertainment as a part of life is fine. But when entertainment becomes a substitute for life, then it becomes a major problem. So, when uh, in the mode of ignorance, that becomes facilitated. Now, the technology by which movies are made, the creativity with which a movie is made, that may not be in ignorance. There may be intelligence used over there. But the product which is consumed by people, that is often increasing the mode of ignorance. So in the mode of ignorance, one doesn't want even to, even to eat, sleep, mate, defend. It requires some energy, some effort, some work. But in the mode of ignorance, one doesn't want to do even that. So when one doesn't want to do even that, then the result is 
one it goes into a illusory world and tries to just get some kind of enjoyment in that illusory world this is the mode of ignorance and <clears throat> in the mode of passion krishna says lobha pravrtir arambha karmanam shama spruha rajasye tani jayante viruddhe bharatarshabha he says <clears throat> and pravrutti there is a strong desire greed there is passionate action over there and that kind of action is there that means people just running around do this do this do this we normally speak to express our thoughts some people speak to discover their thoughts <laughs> they speak hey i should have spoken that i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> so in some cases there is in the mode of passion there is first action and then contemplation should i have done it should i have not done it why did i do it maybe i should i should not have done it so in the mode of passion there is a strong inclination to try to fix it but whether i am fixing it or i am worsening it i don't think about it at that time this is the mode of passion and in the mode of goodness krishna says सर्वद्वारेषु देहेस्मिन् प्रकाशम उपजायते ज्ञानं यदा तदा विद्या विवृद्धं सत्वम् इत्युत ही सेज व्हेन ऑल द डोर्स ऑफ द सेंसेस डोर्स ऑफ द बॉडी व्हिच आर द सेंसेस दे आर इल्यूमिनेटेड विद नॉलेज दैट इज द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस नाउ व्हाट डज दिस मीन द डोर्स ऑफ द आवर बॉडी आर इल्यूमिनेटेड विद नॉलेज इज इट दैट पर्सन इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस light comes out of their ears light comes out of their nose ah uh, they open the light comes out of their mouth not exactly here prakash is not used in the literal sense of light prakash is used in the sense of knowledge that there is knowledge about how to process what comes in and what goes out of the senses let's say if there is a door over here the door is locked if the door is open and we will observe who is coming and who is going out but if there is a distant door and around the door there is complete darkness then some law breaker some thief may come in we may not even notice or we may have a child whom we take care of the child slips out not even notice so if the door is dark then who is coming in who is going out we may not realize so similarly in the lower modes the doors of the body that is the senses they there is no there is no brightness over there that means we don't understand okay what should i see what should i not see what should i eat what i should i not eat what should i hear what should i not hear so basically how to channel uh, how to process the inputs that are coming in from the world that illumination comes in the mode of goodness and when there is the mode of goodness then okay if somebody is coming in uh, we have the door bolted and then we have a security camera okay this is person family members okay let them inside this person doesn't look familiar then we ask who is it and they identify then we let them in. but if they look a little kind of threatening person we not allow them in so basically there is first contemplation and then action and that contemplation comes because there is illumination there is the light that is there light of knowledge by which we can process so <clears throat> we when we are talking about understanding our inner world we need to come to the mode of goodness at least then we can process the inner world more effectively 